Hi, welcome to Vegetables. Day 51. So, today's been spent most of the time watching the Truth About Weight Loss Summit. Um, after that was over, I did go to the store, but other than that, and some dishes, I really haven't done anything. Um, actually, I've been really dragging today because I've been really tired. Um, and I got like seven hours of sleep last night, but just, I guess, the late nights are starting to catch up with me. And you can tell that by, you know, what time I post my videos. But... Um, let's see here. As far as weight, um, I weighed myself this morning. I was 239.9. And then I just weighed myself about 20 minutes ago when I was 241.7. So, a little on the lighter side today. Um, hopefully, you know, that trend will continue. Uh, getting really, really close to being under that 240 mark and staying there. Can't wait for that to happen. Uh, as far as what I ate today, uh, I had the blueberry oatmeal and I remembered to put flaxseed on it. And flaxseed's really good for your heart. Uh, but the one thing I did as well was I used half and half because I was out of the coconut milk. I didn't like it. I used to drink half and half straight out of the bottle or the carton and loved it and I'd put it on my oatmeal and loved it now it was kind of black I missed the coconut flavor believe it or not um, and then I sweetened it with a little bit of with the two spoonfuls of maple syrup I uh, didn't have anything else then to eat until lunch at lunch, I had a Fiesta vegetable mixture that I can get from Kroger. Uh, many of you have Kroger or one of their brands in your area. I know there's a few areas of the country it's not available. Um, but it's a nice little blend of veggies. Um, and then I served that or mixed that with a bird's eye southern style rice. Southwestern rice. Excuse me, southwestern rice. And that was very filling. Um, I did not, I ate that probably around, oh, one o'clock, I think. And then I left for the store at 4.30 and did not get hungry until I got home until about 6 o'clock, so... Yes, I went to the store again. But, you know, a few things I forgot. There were things I ran out of, like coconut milk. And I didn't have any. So I had to get almond slash coconut milk. So we'll see how that goes on my uh, oatmeal in the morning and in my coffee. Uh, but then, uh, while I was fixing dinner, I did get really hungry. And I have some little miniature frozen sausage biscuits in the freezer. And I was fighting very, very hard not to eat them because, you know, stick it in the mic, pop it in the microwave, cook it for a minute, and it's done. Instead of having to wait for your food to cook. But I resisted the urge. Uh, but to try to help resist that urge, I did have a banana. And then for dinner, uh, I had hash browns with egg whites, sausage crumbles, and cheese. And then I had two slices of whole wheat toast with butter. So, you know, not the greatest. Lunch was fantastic. Um, not the greatest. But the other thing I was wanted to do because I was tired and I was hungry when I went to the store and McDonald's is right next door to the store I was so tempted to say I'm too tired I don't want to go home and cook dinner let's just get McDonald's but I didn't do it 
Yay! I didn't do it. And even Scott had called me. And he was going to ask me to get McDonald's. But I didn't hear the phone call. So I didn't answer it. Because I turned my phone off. Not on purpose. Which I need to turn my phone back on. But still. Whatever it takes. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So. That's my day in a nutshell. Nothing Again. Again, because of the Truth of Weight Loss Summit, um, not getting hardly anything done. I'm enjoying the summit because I am learning a lot. But I'll also be glad when it's over because it's taking up a lot of time. As far as the summit, um, I did, you know, I did skip the review yesterday because I didn't really have a chance to watch everything. Um, I did go back and make a few more notes from yesterday, which was day seven. And so, you know, I thought maybe I might go over some of them tonight. Um, the first speaker was actually, let's see, Dr. Eric Walsh. And he discussed understanding food addiction in low-income communities. And he did spend a lot of time on addiction, food addiction. And he did do some correlation to low, low income communities, but the information applies to everybody. Uh, so he did say very early in the presentation that the most addictive food on the planet is pizza. And the reason is, is because it has refined flour, which turns into sugar very quickly. And then it's covered in cheese, which is a bunch of salt and fat. And so, as we are learning during the summit, salt, fat, and sugar are the three most detrimental ingredients or foods that we can eat for our health. Um, and then um, he did talk a lot about cortisol, which that's your stress hormone. So when your stress goes up, your cortisol goes up. But with increased cortisol, um, you still have sugar and fat circulating in your blood even if you don't eat anything so that I thought that was very interesting and then he made a little I don't want to call it analogy but reference that stressed spelled backwards is desserts hmm kind of Funny when you think desserts are mostly salt, oil, or salt, fat, sugar. But um, with increased sugar and increased fat, it feels good and blunts the effect of cortisol and it makes you feel less stressed. So that's why desserts are considered to be comfort food. And, you know, a lot of the other comfort foods that are, are foods that we associate with comfort. Um, it's because of that increased sugar and fat. And because that makes, you know, blunts the effect of the cortisol, um, which cortisol, you know, again, it's your stress hormone. It makes you want to have fight or flight. So it calms you down. Um, then he introduced kind of a new, con well, it's definitely a new concept to me. And it's called vanishing calorie density. Um, and <laughs> he said when he thinks about, uh, at, he thinks about the kids that he sees eating the, you know, really hot cheese puffs. And they eat so many of them so frequently that their fingers are permanently stained red from the hot seasoning. 
which is not good because you know there's no flavor, no f nutritional value in those. And he says um, with those cheese puffs, um, you know, you crunch into them, and then they basically turn to mush. So then that crunch gives your body the signal that you're eating but then since there's you know mush and no additional no more crunching your brain thinks that you didn't eat anything and it makes you want more and crave more and let's see And then he talked about, you know, things to help with the food addiction and uh, strategies. And one is to avoid processed foods, which, of course, if you're interested at all in weight loss, every single diet on the planet tells you to avoid processed foods. Um you also have to eat soluble fiber, fiber because that improves your gut health. You have to exercise to reduce your stress. So rather than reducing your stress through eating desserts, reduce your stress by exercising. Um, he says to fast intermittently. Um, his suggestion is two meals a day with five hours in between the two meals and then the rest of the day you're fasting. And then of course, you know, always have to make sure that you get plenty of sleep. Um, you need to lower your triglyceride levels. Eat plant protein um, because studies have shown that eating plant protein can actually automatic cause weight loss automatically oh, versus eating animal protein and then um, when he was talking about the plant protein versus animal protein he gave the analogy that a hun that a hundred pounds of broccoli has more protein than a hundred pounds of meat. Wow. And then think of the difference in calories. He didn't say this, but I'm just thinking, you know, think of the calories in a hundred pounds of broccoli versus a hundred pounds of meat. Heck, think of the calories in a pound of broccoli versus a pound, a pound of meat. So, wow. That, that really made me think. Um, and then AJ asked, you know, about how, how come, you know, if people know this is the case, why don't they do it? And he said that... Um, People need to be empowered to know better. Uh, most people don't know or understand how, um, how the plant world works and what the plant world can do for you. Um, he also mentioned that there's a lot of doctors out there that don't believe in food addiction. Um, and part of that is because uh, you know, what they learn in medical school. And there is actually funding from the meat and dairy industries for medical school. So, of course, you know, you're going to fund me. You're going to give me money. Of course, I'm going to support you. Um, you know, and then because of that, many doctors still believe the best sources of protein uh, is meat and the best source of dairy, uh, calcium is dairy, which just isn't true. Um, he also 
kind of gave a, a, a distinction between joy and fun. Uh, joy is something that you have for a long time. Fun is something you have for a moment. And when he described joy, he talked about going on a cruise and how, you know, it lasts for a period of time. But the relaxation or the fun that you had during that cruise is something you know gives you joy when you remember that cruise you remember the joy of the cruise um fun then he equated equated to a roller coaster where you know it's you wait in line anticipate and you go on the roller coaster for a millisecond compared to how long you waited to get on it and that's fun then aj asked him about you know sugar or artificially sweetened soda well if it's you know it says well if it's zero calories why is it bad so bad for you and he said that research has shown that people who drink diet soda actually end up eating more calories than people who drink sugared sodas and he said that that's attributed to uh your brain tasting the sweetness so your body expects sugar that never comes. And so then your body craves or signals that you need sugar. Um, they also talked about, or AJ talked about how she has a honey bun on her shelf that she's had there for 12 years. And it looks the same as the exact day she bought it. And his answer to that was that processed foods are so devoid of nutrition that even the bacteria doesn't want to eat it. <laughs> wow. I never thought about, you know, because, you know, I know there's, you know, YouTube videos or pay Facebook posts about the McDonald's hamburger that doesn't mold. That's why. Um, he talked to, you know, a little bit about the power of advertising, um, and why it's so powerful is that even the sight of an, of a food can cause the, in, in an advertisement, can cause the brain to release the dopamine and then and act out the addictive behavior before you even have the addictive food in hand so uh you know just the thought of it will trigger that behavior and you know that happens in other areas as well um i used to work for disabled adults and there was a deplorable healthcare facility that's thankfully now closed. The state shut them down. It was so bad. I mean, one of the clients I cared for didn't get turned and he had bed swords up and down his back and his butt and his legs because they never got him out of bed. But, you know, they were developmentally disabled adults, which, you know, a lot of them had mental issues. And there were some of the clients that to this day, if they go past that facility, even though it's been closed over 20 years, that will go into a full fit of rage. So if caregivers have to take the client out to an appointment or, or, you know, somewhere that they need to go, they have to make sure that they don't go past that facility or they'll have, you know, full-blown temper tantrum on their hands. So, yeah, the power of advertising can have the same effect on food addicts. Isn't it cra and that's just crazy. Just crazy. Um, he did say that obesity is technically 
not a disease. It's a symptom of, meta, of a metabolic syndrome. And then she asked him what is the real truth about weight loss and he said, oh, AJ asked him, uh, weight loss is not easy. We have more ability to do this than we think we have. Tell so again, if it comes up to the price, you know, I've heard it a million times, you can do anything you put your mind to. Basically is what that says. So then the next speaker. Sorry, I know you probably hate watching me lick my fingers, but my pages, my fingers just get so, <laughs> even though they're dry, they get so slippery that I can't turn the pages. But the next um, speaker was Dr. Vera Tarman. She is an addiction specialist, and she talked about the three levels of addiction. Um, the first level is normal or comfort overeaters, which comes from the endocrine system, emotional or the psychological eater, which um, would be someone like like someone with an eating disorder, and then the third one is food addiction, um, which is a neuro neurochemical chemical disorder, neurochemical disorder, not easy to say. Um, and you know the the with a neurochemical disorder, you basically get a drug to self medicate. Uh, she's she did uh, mention her, uh, the horm the hunger hormone called ghrelin. Um, she also said, uh, let's see, oh, so for normal or comfort overeaters, I think. Yeah. I put number one, but I don't remember what the number one's for because it was just a couple of days ago. Um, but she did, she did talk, you know, just talk about the different hormones related to diet or hunger. Um, one is ghrelin, which is the hunger insulin that comes from your stomach. And the next is insulin, which um, you know allows the sugar to go into your cells. The door keep the cell doorkeeper, as I refer to it. Um, there's leptin, which comes from your liver, which is a hormone that goes to your brain to tell your brain to stop eating and that you're full. Um, there's cortisol, which is a stress level. And, yeah, the, you know, those are, that you know, when those are proper, working properly or normally, um, that's how you go through hunger and satiety. Uh, and then, I mean, she talked about a lot more, but these are the points that, um, you know, really spoke to me. Um, she talked about putting your hunger level on a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is that you're so hungry you'll just eat anything, and then 10 is where you're so full you're sick. And she said to make sure that you don't eat to the extremes. Um, she said, ideally, you want to eat between a three and an eight. So where three is that, you know, you're you're hungry. You're definitely hungry. Not kind of sort of, well, I'm hungry. Maybe, maybe not. No, three is when you're hungry. And then eight is when you are full but not stuffed. So, you know, somewhere in between that scale. And then she talked about um, the limbic system, which is your reward pathway, and defined dopamine, serotonin, and endorphins. Uh, the dopamine is what makes you feel pleasure, excitement, makes you look forward to something. 
The serotonin is what makes you satisfied, grateful, feel comfort. And then endorphins are the pain relievers. Okay, where was I? Um, so I talked about dopamine being the, you know, what makes you feel pleasure, excitement, and looking forward to something. Serotonin makes you feel satisfied, grateful, feel comfort, and then endorphins are your pain relief. Um, and when she was talking yeah. about, you know, the hunger scale, um, she said that your body doesn't like extremes. So, you know, it doesn't like when you get ravens, ravenously hungry and then eat until you're sick. So it will neuroadapt to lower you from the extremes. Okay, and I don't know what this next note means. When you have a disorder, I put that when you have a disorder of food, that you can't stop the obsession. So I guess what she that means is that um, when you have a food disorder, then you obsess about the food. Um, she and since sugar is fuel to the brain it's much more addictive than even salt and fat and then uh, chef AJ asked her if addiction and emotional eating always come hand in hand and she said that they don't always come hand in hand but they are definitely both on a continuum. So addiction can lead to emotional eating, which can lead to addiction. Um, I guess my best example will would be, you know, the manic depression the scales, where sometimes you're manic, sometimes you're depressed, and then sometimes you're just somewhere along the line between the two. Um, and then, if, let me look at the here real quick. Uh, she said that the biggest obstacle that someone has in losing weight or making the change is the fear that it's not possible to make the change or lose the weight. And then the second obstacle is asking for help when you need it. And uh, so when it ta when she talks about asking for help is you know get a life coach or get a coach of some sort. Get someone who can teach you more about how to achieve your goals. Um, she said that, you know, the, also to get a support system. Um, the, now once you stop the addictive behavior, your biggest obstacle is accepting that you can't go back. And the analogy to that is once a, once a pickle, never a cucumber again. So you, you just, you can't go back. You can't be a pickle one day and a cucumber the next and then go back to being a pickle. No. Once, you know, and it all, all goes, stems from, you know, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Once a drug addict, always a drug addict. It, it's, it's the same concept with food. Um, and because of... You know, because of that concept, abstinence is necessary if you have an addiction or if you're addicted to food. Um, 
and they uh, they uh, Chef AJ and uh, the doctor talked about uh, trigger foods, and uh, she just defined a trigger food as anything that gets the dopamine going again. Well, not even a trigger food, just a trigger. So, the advertising, that could be a trigger. And so, the seek her truth about weight loss was to find and manage the triggers to calm the brain. Find and manage the trigger food, the trigger foods, and how to calm the brain. Uh, and if you can do that, then the weight loss will follow. So, yeah, a lot of information. Now the next, the next presenter uh, was Dr. Lori Marbus. And her, she spoke on how to disarm triggers that makes you eat unhealthy food. And I was having a really, really hard time being interested in what she said and keeping... You know, and taking notes on what she said, I just, I was not interested. Uh, so, the only thing I wrote was that, was a statistic, and, um, not a statistic, but just a definition of chronic disease. Uh, chronic disease is a disease that lasts more than 90 days. Uh, they cannot prevent it, be prevented or treated or cured by vaccines or medicine. And they just don't disappear. So, yeah, I was just, like I said, I wasn't very interested in what she said. And then the last presenter was... Um... Yeah, it was Bobby Barbera from Mastering Diabetes, and he made two dishes that he would eat as a dessert, and told us a lot about fruit. Um, the first dish... Well, they both were just a different combination of fruit. And I didn't write anything down. I just watched. Um, he spent a lot of time, though, on the mango and how to tell if it's ripe. And he showed how he cuts the mango. And the one mango, he held it up in his hand and it was just dripping with juice. You know, so he could show how much water there is in a good mango and you know chef AJ said that a lot of times you put something like that on your salad you don't need a dressing and he's like yeah sure definitely um you know he talked spent so much time talking about the mango that I don't remember anything else he talked about and I just know that he made a, like a couple of fruit cells that he called dessert. Oh, wait. One was had two things that you wouldn't think would go together. That he said was delicious. And one of the ingredients was celery. And the other one... Persimmon tomatoes? Well, it was a fruit, whatever it was. But I know he talked about, he put celery in the one dish, and I know this is probably not helping you, but he talked a lot about persimmons, how much he loves persimmons, 
Um, but the thing that I got out of his presentation the most, believe it or not, is the best place to buy produce is going to be your local Asian market because they have so much bigger of a variety than your local grocery store does. And when I went to the grocery store today, I took a look to see, you know, just what they had. And they only have the standard fare. They have pears, plums, peaches, apples, oranges, and bananas, grapes, and berries. None of these other fruits, like dragon fruit, mangoes, um, I mean, I, I know occasionally that's the store I went to does have mangoes, and occasionally they might have dragon fruit, but it's not something they get frequently or carry frequently. You know, it was all basically, you know, like red and, red and white grapes. You know, oranges. Um, I th think they may have had some grapefruit. But even with the, with the, you know, but most of what they had was apples. Which are good for you, but you'd like to have a little variety too. Uh, well, that's it for the video today. Uh, I hope that I provided some information for you. Um, I have two more days to review uh, today's videos and pre presenters. And then tomorrow is the last day. Uh, I'll still put the link to the summit in the description box below um, because I think think I mean, you can join up until the last day so if you still want to if you would still like to see the presenters for tomorrow um, if you you know fill out the request they get right back to you right away and you should have access right away to um, tomorrow's presentations um, but if you would like the opportunity to go back and watch the whole summit you also have the option of um, purchasing the summit and um, when you purchase it you can also get a buddy to have it to share it with so you can either pay for it yourself give it to your buddy for free or what I've noticed a lot of people in the chat room are doing is they're teaming up and each one will pay half it's 90 right now until the summit ends it's $99 okay so um, like I said that's it for today um, I hope you I, ho I do hope you enjoy the content and until next time I hope you enjoy the rest of your day thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow